There's, the cops should be with the door.
And if you compare, you can see how many are actually, all throughout the universe, people are actually taking to pure devotional service. Krishna even explains that in the Bhagavad Gita, that even those who take to pure devotional service, very few actually complete the process, and those who do even those, out of those who are successful, hardly, he says, hardly anyone knows me in full. Krishna says that also in the same chapter, chapter uh, of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, I know everything that's happened in the past. I know everything that's happened and will happen in the future. I know everything that's happening in the present. I know everything that is yet to come. And I know all living entities but me. He says, no one knows. To know Krishna is not so easy, but that is the goal of life. Ask him to sit still, please. We are do something to make him quiet. Yes, thank you. And so, to actually know Krishna is the process of bhakti. We have to develop that knowledge of Krishna, which is the basis of achieving the goal of Krishna consciousness, which is love of Krishna. There are four activities of the materialist, dharma, karma, artha, and moksha. Religious pious activities leads to uh, economic development, which leads to finding various ways to satisfy the senses and the mind and the intelligence. And then, of course, when people reach a certain saturation point, they want out. That's called the these are called the pur four Purushartas. But then there's Purushartas Siromani. Purushartas Siromani means that Purushartas that is very rare. It's a rare gem. And what is that? Prema Pumartha Maham. To actually develop love for the Supreme Personality of God. So only in the human form of life can one actually come to that stage and develop love. Of course, in the higher planets, Alpha says they also worship the Lord, but they are so much attached to material happiness and the positions of being in an elevated and material situation. And very rarely, even in the day, the demigods come to this material world and take birth in our movement, as I said, and in order for them to actually achieve the perfection of our which is to go back home. Ramban also gave another example, which is quite interesting. We don't hear it much. And uh, using an analogy, or a little antidote, he said there is a huge, vast ocean. And somewhere in that huge, vast ocean, there's a lock floating. And in that lock, there is a hole. And somewhere else in that ocean, there's a frog. And the frog is swimming around the ocean. The frog is floating on the ocean. The frog comes to the surface. And he just happens to go through the knot in that log somewhere in that ocean. Using that, it's, it's very rare to get to the devotional service. And very, there's many people who come to devotional service, but very few actually achieve the goal of devotional service. But the goal of devotional service is not difficult to attain, but it requires two things. It requires, and that is to carefully and with complete attention follow the instructions of the spiritual master with determination. The difference between animal life and human life is the pr principle of determination. Baba says an animal cannot become determined. You break a stick and it goes in a different direction. Some noise, some, something that changes their experience. But a human can become determined. So in order to achieve the goal of Krishna consciousness, one has to carefully follow the instructions of the spiritual master. 
apply that in a determined way. And, of course, there is a lot of mercy available, the mercy of the association of devotees, the mercy of the scriptures, the mercy of the holy name, the mercy of Krishna Prashadam, so much to support our enthusiasm and our determination in Krishna consciousness. But still, we have to make that effort. And, again, the foundation is following carefully the instructions of the spiritual master. And Prabhupada, when he was asked, what is your most important instructions to your disciples? And Prabhupada said, my most important instructions to my disciples is to every day, on beads, without fail, chant 16 rounds of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So he clarified, out of all the instructions, that is the foundation for the success and the development of our progress in Krishna consciousness, to carefully. Now, a lot of times we find, and this happens a lot, not a lot, but it happens. You know, people are so enthusiastic when it comes to the initiation before, but then as time goes on, you know, Maya seems to come in and divert our attention away and we get a little bit less, la uh, less enthusiastic. Or we get a little lax to follow the principles, to chant the holy names, to take the opportunity to associate with Vaishnavas. And then we lose that, in, that, that in spirit that brought us to Krishna consciousness and we just go on in a more mechanical way. And that cannot last because either you go down or you go up. <laughs> Spiritual life is like that. If you're not moving forward, you're being pushed backward. There's no question of what they say, sitting on the fence or just riding the waves. It's just the material energy works in such a way as to always be pushing us in that direction. So we have to be very enthusiastic to keep our consciousness fixed on the, on the instructions of the spiritual master. And as Prabhupada emphasized, along with that instruction of 16 rounds on beads, he said, remember Krishna always. Now, to come to that stage of remembering Krishna always is the process of bhakti. And how do we do that? Carefully chant those 16 rounds every day. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that one who chants Regularly, every day, will eventually chant always. <laughs> because you keep chanting, you, do, you avoid the offenses. Srila Prabhupada was very uh, enthusiastic in many of the initiation ceremonies to have the ten offenses recited. The devotees would be reminded that it's two things, what to do and what to avoid. So. We should know those ten offenses and very carefully avoid them and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and then we'll make nice progress in devotional service. That's the foundation. And of course, always look for opportunities to engage in devotional service, practical activities of devotional service. Whether we're living inside the temple or whether we're somewhere in the community, we have to think, I have my intelligence, I have my resources, I have time, how can I serve? Always be thinking in that way, and of course the spiritual master is there to guide you in that direction also. So we should be thinking in that way. So I want to congratulate you. We have a very interesting mixture here. We have a first initiated, a second initiated, and someone who's already first initiated who is just going to throw the grains into the fire. So no one, there's no two people on the same level here on this initiation. It's interesting, but that's okay. <laughs> Variety is the spice of spiritual life. <laughs> so thank you for coming forward and uh, and uh, Take this process very seriously and the strength in order to keep our enthusiasm up is Sadhu Sangha.
association with devotees, particularly those devotees who can inspire us in, in our Krishna consciousness. So we seek out the association of devotees, and in that association, what do we do? We serve. We serve. Because that is our, that is our constitutional nature, is to be engaged in devotional service, and therefore, whatever role we play within the society, within the world, is, all, is superfluous to our actual real role. Real role is jivaya, surupai, krishnera, nityadas. We are eternally servants of the Supreme Lord. So thank you very much for coming this far. We, we pray that you make it all the way. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Okay, so we have one first initiate, so Durga. So uh, first you offer your pranams to Srila Prabhupada, and then you can go to the altar area and offer to the deities there, and then you come here. <laughs> Durga, she is uh, the mother of a devotee Anasuya, who was also uh, very fixed in her Krishna consciousness. And she see Radha Govindaji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Why don't you pay your obeisances one more time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are the four regulative principles? Speak into the microphone, into the microphone. No gambling, no meat eating, no, no sleepless bed. One more. If you go down the street, you see so many shops that sell these things. No illicit sex and no, no intoxication. Okay, that means no, of course, no intoxication, but sometimes we get intoxicated by watching TV, so no TV. Okay, and that's another form of intoxication. Okay. So, do you agree to chant at least 16 rounds every day of Maha Mantra on beads? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, thank you. We're happy that you have come. And actually, her daughter is here and she's a wonderful devotee. She just walked through the door. And uh, because of her mother, she's become a devotee. So her mother has been her guide through her whole life. I've known 
Mataji Durga for many years. She goes to India. She goes on pilgrimages to the holy places. She's very saintly in her devotional life. She's 75 years old. She's at the beginning of her spiritual life, theoretically. But actually, she's been doing it her whole life. So we're happy uh, to give you a name. Your name now, Durga, is the uh, personification of the external energy of the Lord. So now we will give you a new name, which is the personification of the internal energy of the Lord. Your new name is Purnamasi. <laughs> Purnamasi Devi Dasi Ki all right, Krishna. You like that name? Okay. <laughs> We're just checking. <laughs> she says she's been coming to Radha Govinda since 1973. I just I started in 73, so she, maybe I should take initiation from you. <laughs> Thank you. And you, we're so happy you have come this part to make this uh, connection with Srila Prabhupada's movement in a very real way. Thank you. Hare Krishna. And of course, we have one second initiate, and that is um, uh, Jai Rathe. So do you agree to renew your initial vows? Uh, chanting 16 rounds and following the four regulative principles. And also learn that there are qualifications and qualities that are indicated of those who are receiving Brahminical status. Krishna mentions them in the Bhagavad Gita. They're also mentioned in other places. So learn those characteristics, simplicity, uh, peacefulness, austerity, tolerance, uh, detachment from happiness and distress. In other words, uh, equipoised and happiness and distress. Knowing the Shastras, be able to speak the Shastras, and knowing how to follow the religious principles that are given. Now, these are the qualities that are mentioned for Brahminical initiation. Hmm? Okay, so carefully study those and uh, practice those. A Brahmin is known by their activities and by their character, not by birth or by having any position in society. It's really about the activities and about the character. So Prabhupada wanted our society to be exemplary in character, to show the world that this is what this is ideal life. This is ideal life. Okay, thank you very much. And we have uh, Ananda, Arjun, uh, Ananda. Arjun Ananda, I just met him about an hour ago for the first time. He is a wonderful disciple of His Holiness Radhama Swami Maharaj. And he is already taking his vows, and he's consummating the vows now by Throwing, taking part in this uh, this yoga. So thank you. I'm sure Maharaj is pleased you've completed the whole process now. <laughs> and of, of course, you know, although it's not second for you, still consider that it's always a good idea to think, oh, I promise to follow 16 rounds every day chant and follow the four regulative principles. It's very important to re always be remembering what is our, re what is our responsibility in Krishna Khan. That's foundational. So thank you, Hare Krishna, and thank you for sitting in and blessing this yoga. <laughs> okay. So our book, Samskara Thiyas, at the end of lecture, inform initiates that five will now begin.
the yagna and they are to repeat the mantras after you word by word. Whenever I speak something in this city, and at the end of each complete mantra, they offer them to the fire along with the mantra, Swaha, Swaha, Swaha. And it's not only for those who are getting initiation, those who are attending, they can also repeat, Swaha, 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 as well as the mantra can work in the So, now we'll be lighting the fire and invoking the fire's name is very from Saskara to Saskara. And that's why this particular fire for grounding the initiation, the first initiation, is the power. So, so is the name of the fire. And we will be invoking that fire right away. Om Namasamantai Satsumudai Satsumadai 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 Sadhvetam, 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 
Sahabatukam, Sahabatukam, Parijana Saitam, Parijana Saitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna, Sri Radha Krishna, Bala, Bala, Sahagana, Lanita, Lanita, Sri Vishaka Pitamusha, Sri Vishaka Pitamusha, Swaha.
Thank you.